Hello. Hey. And welcome to The Sound of That <laughs> with George Pelham and me, Lindsay Henderson. <laughs> so. Oh no, I should say Lindsay Isla. Ah oh, well, fucked it now. Lindsay Isla. Isla is actually Lindsay's middle name, which you wouldn't know. I'd rather it was my first name now, I think it's nicer. I it's really like Henderson. Mm, it's definitely more trendy now, Isla, I think. Mm, it's that silent S. <laughs> I got something in my throat. <laughs> Are we keeping this in? Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got a silent H in my last name. Which and I'm... a frog in your throat. <laughs> um, so, we just interviewed Dan Crossley. How was that? Aren't we saying we're going to interview Dan Crossley? Oh, no, we're not. We're saying it right. We're just okay. We just interviewed Dan Crossley. We just interviewed him. How did you enjoy the experience? I absolutely loved it. I thought it was really interesting, really nice, and it was a pleasure. Mm. The, obviously it is FaceTime, so it's a bit glitchy, but it's definitely 100% watchable. And mm -hmm. he just has so much, so many interesting things to say, and mm. just left me with like a really good feeling. Yeah, yeah, in... he's, he's very uplifting to talk to. Yeah. And it's amazing, you, you don't know how much he does himself. Just because seeing, looking at his music and watching his videos, you, you assume that there's some huge team doing it all, but it's really just Dan by the sounds of it, which is, well, he'll tell you more about that. Yeah. Say. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Um, so if you could tell me a little bit more about like your how you got into music. Mm -hmm. So well, I base I got into music at a really young age. It was all I was really good at. Um, I <laughs> I kind of sucked at kicking a ball around a field. So um, <laughs> yeah, and my head was always like the ball magnet, you know, like it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, yeah, I got into music, I kind of just started like skipping PE at school and like going to the music rooms and kind of just did that for a little bit, um, started writing from a really young age and then I moved to London and started taking it very seriously, um, partly moved to London when I was 15 and then fully moved to London when I was 18 um, and just like threw myself into studio sessions and stuff and that uh, brings us to today. Yeah. yeah. Um, which part of London do you live in now? I'm in Northwest right now, but I'm gonna go back to West um, in like a month because I'm getting my own place, which I'm really excited about. So oh, I make wow. as much noise as I want. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I guess it's a, str a struggle because you're finding that tough at the moment is finding somewhere that you can make noise in the house uh -huh. and not piss people off. Yeah. Have you had a lot of experiences super, of annoying I'm, people? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So even when I get my own place, I'm gonna try my best to soundproof it. I'm gonna get some 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 foam. <laughs> yeah. Soundproof the wall. Do you um, ever do the mattress so when you're kind of singing thing. into a basically like having the mattress behind you and that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. There's loads of stuff you can do, but um, yeah, you kind of have to just like make use of your space and do what you can. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, so we we did a little bit of a Dan Crossley googling, and we saw um, <laughs> it sounds worse than it is. But we saw because oh, okay. so we saw that um, Telford Scott Talent is that was that what it was called? Oh. So you won that, and then you did the um, Open Mic UK as well, which which I did as well. And I was oh, just yeah yeah. yeah yeah those were the days. Um, they were the days. So I was just wondering, I guess, because I know with a lot of those shows, because I experienced that, mm -hmm. you get like kind of X Factor or The Voice or people like that maybe coming to you off the back of one of those things. And I assume you maybe know someone or maybe if you didn't, if, if not, then maybe is that something you ever thought about or something that you would um, not consider? in your past I, life. I'm very open to it. I'm not one of these, you find that there's a lot of artists that are very anti-show, yeah. you know? And I do think that um, everyone's journey is like their journey. Um, 
I wouldn't ever say no to it. Um, mm -hmm. I've been very open to it in the past and I'm still very much open to it. I just think if I was going to go on a show, um, I would just be very strict as to what I want to do on that show mm -hmm. and what I want to sing. And being an artist, obviously, you're writing a lot of your own stuff. And I'm not really a covers guy. Like, I, I try. <laughs> I put up a cover today and I was like, I'm going to take that tomorrow. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'd have to just be very careful and I'd just make it very obvious what I was there to do. Uh -huh. um, I think it's just about being transparent with your fan base and your audience and then you can't really go wrong, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. Have you had anyone try and sort of manipulate you in any way, your sound or Yeah, your for sure. Like, you know, uh, we go through working with so many different people, especially, uh, you know, so I was first signed when I was 15 and it was in like a band. <laughs> so, oh, wow. You know, I and didn't obviously, know that. Like, being 15, it was super like, you know, oh, I've got this opportunity. I'm just going to take it. I didn't have my artistry then to be mm -hmm. like the stubborn kind <laughs> of artist that I am today. And I, I say that with pride because, I mean, being a stubborn artist is being very true to your artistry. So I think it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you, you go through loads. I think I've had like five different teams gone through the years, but it's very normal. And, um, yeah. you know, for example, like a couple of, I think, yeah, I'd say two out of the five, like would say, you know, I'm an openly gay man and like they would, Definitely, when I'd write songs, try and change um, he to she in the ah. songs and all sorts of stuff. So there's a lot you have to kind of put up with. But being young, I kind of let it happen. But now it's kind of like, nah, I'm good. I'll do me. And mm. Is there a... finding a team that really appreciate that and want to work with you on that. Is there a kind of, because I know a lot of artists are like, oh, you know, they're trying to change me and, you know, I just want to be myself. <laughs> But is there maybe a piece of advice that you had that you actually thought was helpful? Yeah, I would yeah. definitely say um, it's this industry is a game, right? Mm -hmm. And like no one ever says this when they're asked this question. And it really irritates me. Like as an artist, knowing what it's like, it irritates me that some artists just don't say it is how it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's a game you if you know there's certain situations you're going to be put in where you have to compromise on something for later on for it to be amazing mm -hmm. so and there's definitely you can't say i mean you can guarantee that every single artist in the top 20 has had to compromise something about their artistry to get to where they are now 100 percent. there's just no way that you know, having such a big team around you and whatnot, you can still come across as authentic, but sometimes you just gotta compromise to get through the first year or two. Sure. And then when you when you've proved yourself and done your work, then you can start um, going into yourself a little bit more. But it's just yeah, it's just about a bit of give and take. Uh -huh. um, I would say, um, don't don't be a don't be too like in the court like no and then lose out on a really good opportunity sure yeah that's really that's what interesting I yeah I, I like that um song time yeah I let's do hear. let's hear let's hear your your oh, first fine. song then that's great the bad one or the good one <laughs> what do you want to do first <laughs> okay let me do right, i'm gonna do the bad one <laughs> Um, so I was going through my computer and I don't have my hard drive with me and I usually I just put all of like the shit, the bad songs on the hard drive. Don't worry, drive. you can swear. <laughs> okay, I love it. <laughs> shit song on the hard drive. Um, but I found this song that I'd done like two years ago <laughs> and um, I remember like I stopped halfway through because I was like, it's not, do it's not doing it for me. The lyrics was like super they were like cheese on toast, like <laughs> the cheesiest lyrics you've heard in a song. And like, I, I was reading back on it and I was like, this isn't even about me. Like, I <laughs> just like, uh, it was probably like my first song that I, 
I think this was before I started writing for other people as well. So it's definitely just doesn't hit. Like it's just, I'm intrigued. I, I like the melody. <laughs> the, the lyrics, they're just so like, I mean, I don't live in California. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Nobody needs to like, know that. <laughs> They're such obvious lyrics. <laughs> We've all and done I like, it. I like, I like, I'm like one of these, I love a, a lyric that I have to depict and I have to like, mm. like listen to a couple of times to get my head around it. Mm -hmm. And this just gives it you on a plate. It's like, <laughs> so yeah, I guess I'll do this one. I'm so intrigued now. I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> I hope you can hear it okay. Uh, I think it comes straight in as well. Let me just... Um, See, sorry, one sec. It's okay. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna go straight in with it. Oh, great. All right. <laughs> uh, if I remember it properly. In the darkest hour, in the quiet silence, do I spring to your head? Remember me in your bed? What do you mean? Now think of me at all Cause you've been running, running through my mind all day <laughs> I can't catch up, but we got right love on play I need some time to rest my head, I'm not sleeping right But baby tell me how the palm trees in California We're a million miles away but I still adore ya <laughs> And it's driving me insane Maybe it all but don't be up on us So tell me we're done Sometimes we rain pours California <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah. That, I think that's pretty great. I, <laughs> I thought that was good. <laughs> I liked it. Just imagine like California. It's just I just think it's very cheese for me. And I was just like, yeah, it doesn't feel like you. It doesn't feel like yeah, you. We mentioned... stopped it. We stopped it right there. We were like, I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you mentioned in one of your, um, pro I think it was a promo video for YouTube that you did, and you said about being. Oh, you've really done this stuff. <laughs> Um, and it was, it was, you were saying about being a perfectionist. That's right. Um, so it, obviously if you think that that's not very good, you must hold yourself to such a high standard. Does that like, yeah. does that kill you a little bit? Do you think? Do you know, it, I drive myself insane. I honestly like, and it's got to, recently, oh, sorry, recently, um, like I've just been kind of toying with the idea of, I've just been making so much music and there's, it's to the point where there's, <laughs> there's like two and a half albums like worth of wow. like material. And I'm just a bit like, and this is the filtered out stuff that I would want to release. Like this mm. is like the bad and you know, it's not just and a half albums of songs that I'm not, don't really care about. It's, um, I just, oh, I've got over the amount of music that I need. And I'm kind of like, do I just like throw some stuff out? But then as a perfectionist, you're like, but I want every song and release to be as meaningful as possible and mm -hmm. still get the amount of love that I feel like it deserves. Mm. Mm. So it's, it's difficult because you find yourself just being like, I'm, I'm like a quite a weird person. I'm like, I like a good strategy for releasing and stuff. Mm. Um, I wish I could be like Lauv and like Jeremy Zucker who like throw out albums of like 30 songs on them mm. and they don't care. But like, mm. I just, I like to have everything having its own concept and placed nicely. And I don't know, it's something that I don't like about myself because I would love to throw out a track a month. Mm. I would love it. Mm. I would love to do that. but. Obviously, being unsigned at the moment and whatnot is it's having the funds to be able to market that song correctly and, you know, get a push behind it that, you know, there's a lot of 
financial stuff that goes into a release of a song. Of course. Um, so it's just very difficult. Um, like I said, I'd love, like, I've toyed with the idea so many times, just like, even just this year, I was like, okay, these these eight tracks can go into a mixtape and I'll just call it, I'll just call it this and I'm just going to throw it all on YouTube as like a mixtape. But then I'm like, I get to it and I, I like plan everything and I, you know, do all of the visuals and stuff and I spend weeks doing it and then I'm like, I can't let go of them. <laughs> I don't want to let go of my babies, you know? <laughs> uh, so yeah. it, it drives me nuts, honestly, but... Uh, yeah, I guess being a perfectionist is kind of annoying, yeah. Because <laughs> all your music videos as well, they seem to be, they're such good ideas and mm. they're really creative. Do you have a lot of input and say, like, are they all your ideas or were they co like a collaboration? Um, I definitely, so the closure, which is the, the main bulk of my releases, I guess, mm. from, from what everyone's seen online, um, that was a full concept and i went into the studio knowing what i was going to write about but i didn't know how it would come out how it would come out mm -hmm. and the sound and everything i just went in with like a kind of open open mind and um it just so happened that every song that i wrote led into one another it was kind of like a timeline of this relationship yeah so i narrowed it down to the five songs and it just so happened that those five songs were done in order and um it made sense because it works out chronologically. It's, it's like, I was just like, I have to do, I have to do music videos that lead into each other. Like I can't not yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so me being me, I just like gave every single song a music video and then just tied it all together. And it kind of became this like concept EP. Um, I definitely like drew the storyboards and everything and knew you know, the storyline was my story, so it kind of had to have my input. And I worked with um, a guy called Paolo, on, he's a, an amazing director, um, and he, like, we collaborated on ideas, and he's such a visual, he's such a great visual artist, um, that he, he brought stuff to the table that wasn't on my storyboard, but it was just so, like, such iconic moments, like... Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted a fighting scene in like mind games, <laughs> but I didn't realize that I'd be holding a bat and like a smoke cannon would go off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I didn't realize I was killing a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, uh, I love collaborating on stuff like that. I mm -hmm. think it's great. And um, I just love merging ideas. Same with writing, I love co-writing, so. Mm. Yeah, well, I noticed with um, with Closure, you, it's, it seems like you had a certain sound, like, um, so you can definitely tell it's like a project. I don't know if you use yeah. the same producer on everyone, but it seemed like it's kind of soulful, quite big sound, big arrangements. Yeah, and yeah. then maybe the stuff you released recently is, it seems more maybe stripped back and piano less. Completely. And so I was just wondering yeah. what you were, what you were thinking like, your next kind of release is are you trying to go a, a certain direction or are you not really thinking about it you're just seeing what happens i wasn't thinking about it but i think um closure definitely i wanted closure to be a concept tp and i wanted it to have its own little place and i'm i love pop music pop music is like my first love mm -hmm. and like i will always be a pop artist through and through I just love dance music and pop music. Um, it's how I incorporate that because I grew up on a lot of R&B and a lot of Motown and a lot of big singers that you don't usually get in pop music. So I kind of gave Closure, like Closure was like an ode to my, to my past of like my, br my bringing up in music. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That was like my thing. Um, and moving forward, I kind of wanted to release a couple of piano tracks to be like, okay, I want, I don't want to just come out with like a like off the floor dance pop banger, yeah, and be like everyone be like, what happened? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I guess it's kind of like easing through the transitions, and I think a lot of artists are really scared to change their sound and like they're just like oh no i have to do this which is why i wanted um which is why i love concept ideas so much because i just love the fact that they can that can stand on its own and that's okay because that was closure like mm. that was closure dan 
and this is the next project will be um pop down like so mm. i just wanted to re- like and these um these piano singles were very um they were soft releases they, yeah. they didn't have any pressure on them mm-hmm. i didn't put any money into them like mm. um they're both produced by me like oh wow you know, really um they sound yeah, excellent so I, thank you i just you started so surprised. Um, doing production <laughs> i didn't know that like, you, you were doing that really yeah no I, so, I, I wasn't i thought because i thought i saw on your story that you just were teaching yourself maybe six months ago or something i, I wasn't sure but that's really impressive yeah I, i've been doing production for like all in all a year and a half and for the start for the for the majority of that time it was just me like i'm just gonna do a piano ballad because yeah. that's all i know how to do, do you know what i mean <laughs> um but in the last like i'd say like eight or six months like i've really gone hard at just like i've been taking like a couple of hours a day and especially like during the times that we're in like sure. i've had so much time to hone in on the craft and actually the next song that i'm gonna um do for you is produced by me it's a lot heavier oh great um okay well that's very perfect segue <laughs> that's into a nice that segue then. yeah so yeah yes, let's, do it. Let's, do it. let's do it <laughs> it's like okay, you've done I'll this before <laughs> So this is called I Hate Goodbyes. And the reason that this is probably one of my favorite songs I've written is classic because it's new and it's like, <laughs> I'm not bored of it yet. <laughs> I'm not tired of it. Um, and also like the sentiment of the song is so typical me. It's like, I've had, it's, I'm like a serial, I'm, I hate, I don't mind saying goodbye to someone if you know you're gonna see them again, but I, I cannot stand like those big like awful goodbyes like you know like the or if you like say for instance I don't know you're like you're leaving a job or yeah whatever I don't know mm. um I'm just I'm always like oh I'd rather just sneak out the back and then just never see you again because I hate that whole like oh mm. I, I'm, I'm not a very intimate person unless it's my partner so <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm very awkward like that <laughs> so I kind of took that idea and was like okay it kind of seeps into relationships as well where i'm kind of like i would rather not like have this discussion and say goodbye so i'm just gonna like leave in the night and be like bye (laughs) it's awful but i mean it's the truth so (laughs) so yeah this is i hate goodbyes can't wait see if this works uh we won't say that. come on, my kids, alive. Oh, I tried to repeat, but it haunts me in my sleep. Oh, if I stay any longer, I can't promise I'm a love you, cause I'm chasing high. I'll be gone by tomorrow, we're no good for each other, I'm sure you'll be fine. And I'll be on the plane before it turns like I guess I'm the one to blame, cause I can't, I can't goodbye. I'm gonna try my best to make it quick. Drive real fast down with 66 And I'm the one to blame Cause I hate, I hate goodbye I hate, I hate goodbye Oh, I hate goodbyes Yeah, I hate goodbyes Oh, I love it it's so good. That's super cool. Thank you. You can really tell, <laughs> like, the first one, you can tell in the way that you performed it that you're just, that's just you and you're you're really into that. Mm. It's a great song. Yeah. I love it. And you, I can oh, definitely you. tell where, when you're talking about you were going through the piano stuff, just um, kind of more soft releases, whereas this is more what you want yeah, to do, yeah. like, see it feels like, bigger and poppier and the drop down chorus and everything like that. For sure, like, mm. I just wouldn't want to, like, I love that song, and there's no, like, I would love to release that next, but 
I just, I don't know, I want it to, I want it to be a great release. So I need to be out of lockdown so I can record a sick music video. Ah, <laughs> and yeah. um, I need to just uh, like have my, have my team together, which I don't have right now. It's just me. So really, yeah. I love the music video yeah. you did in lockdown. Though I thought that was fab. Yeah, it was. I thought I, it was that really was good. a big effort. <laughs> yeah. Did you um, mi- you cut it all together yourself as well? Yeah, so I just got my housemate, Nora, who's lovely. I got her to um, record on my iPhone. And then, yeah, we just like made up loads of like scenes. And then, I don't know, I just kind of got all the footage together. I movied it and then, wow. yeah, I just chopped everything together. It took about like, it didn't take too long. It took like a day to edit everything mm. and then like half a day to shoot. It was really fun, actually. It gave mm. us something to do, so. Yeah. It's amazing what you can do when when we have been stuck inside and then you yeah. use your surroundings all of a sudden you become so resourceful which is fab yeah for sure and like drunk call was the first single that i released like like as a completely independent artist like not having a team around me mm. so i was like how do i do this it's a super intimate song like how do i make a visual that's like super intimate and I can just do for free. And I was like, yo, like that was like in my room. I got my friend to put subtitles over it in yellow. So it looked like super nineties. Yeah. And then like did like a one, did like a one take. And now like people are redoing the video and putting their own subtitles on, on YouTube. And it's crazy. Like I was just like, what? That's yeah. so cool. So um, I was going to ask about lockdown. So I know you said about it was helping you with your production. Do you think it's yeah. helped your music, helped you do things that you might not have done if it hadn't happened lockdown? Do you think it's been positive in any way for you? Yeah, I do. I think I've definitely found a sound within the pop realm that I really love. And mm-hmm. I feel like when when producing myself, which is what I'm loving to do at the moment, is you can have like a ballad, you can have like a I Hate Goodbyes, you can have um, some of my other songs that like vary in tempo and vary in emotion, but there's that same vein of Dan running through them Mm -hmm. that would only come if I was producing it. Yeah. So even if it's it's a case of, I'm not confident enough as a producer right now to release something that I fully produce unless it is stripped back. So I would personally like take all of these demos to a producer that I love and trust or that I've worked with before or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and be like, yo, know, like, can you, can I send you the project? And we go into the studio and let's just do a co-production on this. If I can get some ad production on it, that'd sure. be amazing. And then like, it just sits better with me. It's like in confidence wise. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm always like that guy that will show someone a demo and be like, I'm not a producer. But, you know, so I'm just kind of working on getting to that point where I'm just like, oh, I, I am a producer and a songwriter, you know. I think you are. I think you definitely are. And and considering that those, those other two, the, the releases that you just put out, I, I just thought they sounded sounded huge and they sounded like oh, a huge you. proper producer. So that's what you are. <laughs> thank you. That's really sweet. Thank you. I think sometimes it's hard as when you're doing creative stuff, I find it hard mm-hmm. to sort of feel successful because there's no like promotion or there's no boss like telling you that you've done well. Mm. Yeah. What do you think being successful, what does that mean to you? For me, success, I feel like for a lot of people, success is so different. Um, I feel my version of success would be to be stably doing music all the time Mm -hmm. without having to worry and to just get the love get more of the love that i already do get but get just more and more of it with like you know like when when a kid comes to me and messages me and it's like like oh your song really helped me through this or you know like i've been struggling to come out to my parents but when I listen to your music, it just like makes me like think like, oh, you did it, so it's okay. Like that sort of stuff is 
like so crucial to me and that's success to me like if i'm having a bad day and that comes from a phone i'm like i'm doing something good so that's success to me everything else is amazing but it's a bonus mm. so yeah would you find that when you get those messages and stuff do you find any pressure in being a role model for sure a lot but i always i've always made it so clear that i don't want to be like a, a squeaky clean role model because mm. i'm not i'm not that i i've messed up in the past like we all we all should be allowed to mess up um I'm aware that my job is kind of to be that, but I think by me making it clear that, you know, everyone messes up sometimes and whatnot, I, I want that to be um, a really big factor in what I do because I feel like there's a lot of squeaky clean pop stars and celebrities out there that, you know, they, they're like, they will, be a great role model and stuff, but there's, there's no real, there's no like, let's sit down and talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like the, the people that listen to me are, are you know, they're mid-teen, so they're not young, young. Um, I feel like my, my audience is definitely like, not young enough to be super negatively influenced. Um, but yeah, I always, it always, is always in the back of my mind, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the responsibility is huge, but I try and, I try and do my best to, you know, message back to people that want advice and stuff. I always, you know, say stuff that I've thought about and it's not just, you know, something that I'm just like, yeah, I'll just tell them this, you know, it's yeah. always really thought about and um, processed because I don't, I don't want anyone to do something wrong because, you know, I'm still growing, I'm 24, so, like, mm -hmm. you know. With, with Instagram and, and social media and everything like that, do you um feel pressure to one create content like the c mm -hmm. word that everyone uses the whole time <laughs> and to just kind of be on it all the time if you're replying to people being kind of transparent do you, do you feel pressure and do you sometimes want to switch off or do you enjoy it i feel yeah i do feel pressure to reply sometimes i do actually yeah a lot of the time <laughs> i have you know a couple of really like a couple of amazing people that will always you know message me after every story uh, <laughs> like, but i know it, it's all love but mm. I, you know sometimes i can't because i've got music to make so i can keep on doing what i'm doing but um yeah i i do feel the pressure to reply definitely i i, I actually never don't i never not reply if i see it i'll reply mm. if mm -hmm. i see it yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, and content creation, that's the bane of my life. If I could lock myself in a studio and not do anything else, I would. Mm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that's the cool thing. And the same, yeah. It's honestly like, I wish, I wish that was a thing still. I wish that we could just make music. Um, and obviously I'd still have a lot of input in my, my videos and stuff, but, you know, like putting trying to scrape together bits of content so you can keep a social media following wasn't a thing in 2005, you know? Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, and I feel like it takes up a lot of, like, today's artists' time and valuable time that they can be, like, honing in on their craft. But, you know, I'm guilty. We're, it's, it's the industry that we're kind of in right now, so you just got to go with the flow. Mm. <laughs> mm, yeah. And I guess when you're what you were saying before about the squeaky clean artist. Mm -hmm. If you are doing that, then it's almost like you're setting yourself up to fail because everyone is going to make a mistake and then you're going to fall harder. So I think it's good when people are real. It's nice when you, when you see that because it sounds cheesy, but your mistakes are what make you who you are today. Yeah, like I didn't... I didn't have like someone to look up to, I don't think, when I was growing up that would like say how it is really, except for really like when Amy Winehouse came along, like, but I was older by then. Mm. Um, I like, I didn't really have an artist that would be able to, you know, discuss like matters like, you know, race and, you know, sexuality and stuff. There wasn't any openness back then. Mm. And I want, 
the people that listen to my music, like, I want it to be like a family, like, you know, everyone can help each other out. And I'm the first person to get on social media and say it how it is, because I just think um, that's the only way people can be helped is within conversation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's such a powerful tool that we have now. So many people have got voices that didn't have voices before Mm -hmm. so obviously there's so many downsides to it but it's amazing what people can do and the accessibility it has as well for people which is great and I think we're using that more now that lockdown has happened is Mm -hmm. like people are holding blogger meetings for and inviting like disabled people that wouldn't have been able to come before or having stuff not just in London it's really good so I'm I'm interested to see how the world it's been amazing to see like yeah, it's. It, I think we're at a really exciting time, to be quite honest. Like, you know, it, it's terrible, like, what 2020 has been so far. It's terrible. But it's the way that the world has dealt da- Like, no, not the way that the world has dealt with it, because, it, uh, to be honest, I, <laughs> that's questionable. <laughs> but it's the way our generation has dealt with everything is just so remarkable and i think that this generation will change will change the world and that is i'm so proud to be a part of this generation that really cares and wants to make a change um and i don't think this generation we i don't think we give ourselves enough credit for what we have to deal with um Mm. and yeah it's it's good that we all come together and we use our voices for the better and i don't think like i said i don't think people really recognize how much as a generation we have to have to go through yeah there's been other stuff that's happened in other generations but i i think ours is very much downplayed Mm. a lot of the time and i think we're really strong as a generation and i'm really happy and excited to be a part of um really passionate beautiful people so yeah yeah Mm. oh that's such an that's a nice way to look at it nice way yeah Yeah. um And a nice way to end it as well. So should we finish off with your, um, who yeah. we should be listening to now? Yes, I want you guys to be listening to um, a girl called Kat Burns. She's a really good friend of mine. Um, she's got a stunning voice. She's so young, but so talented. <laughs> um, so yeah, check her out, Kat Burns. She's got stuff on Spotify and stuff. So, See yeah. you okay. Sir? A C or a K? Cat. Oh, oh C, C, C. Because <laughs> it could go either way, right? It, like the animal. Got yeah, you. Yeah, cat, like, like C-A-T. <laughs> like cat. Um, Got you. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll make sure that we link everything as well. So For and sure. we'll, we'll link your song. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dan. Oh, Appreciate yeah. it. We've loved Thank you so you. much. Yeah, Thank cheers. <laughs> Speak to you soon. Bye. See you later, dude. Bye-bye. Bye. That was our interview with Dan. Hope you enjoyed it. We certainly did. Yeah, it was fab. He was really great. And I loved just discussing the stuff about our generation. Just mm-hmm. was it was interesting. Yeah, because uh, I think our, our generation gets a lot of um, maybe sometimes stick. The, the millennials. People yeah, that, that old, good old millennial mm, thing. People treat it a bit negatively, but, but it's nice to hear a positive um, interpretation of it. Which is really cool. Mm. And I love how he was talking about uh, how he wanted to transition through different sounds. And he wanted to start with soul and his parents, and then he wanted, but he wants to come more pop, so he's slowly going there. And it, it feels so planned out and so, um, it's so thought about, which is really, I found really interesting. And his worst song was not bad. Not at all, it was great. Yeah. That's a good song. If we compared it to my worst song, or mine. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I have any songs. Yeah. If I made a song, it would be automatically the worst thing ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was great. And I, mm. but I was worried though because I thought that one, my question about success sounded very busy, not businessy. <laughs> I sounded like I was like it was a job interview. Mm. And I asked it, and I was like, no. it got a really good answer, but I was like, no. oh god. No, because it's true. Because artists might have a different idea of success, like numbers or money or just just be, to be happy doing it and yeah it's hard to know when you i i just wonder if anyone does feel 
successful. Successful. I want to meet that. If you feel successful, then can you just drop us a comment? Drop us a line. Like I want to know, like what? I was going to say we forgot to do something earlier. We forgot to say like and subscribe. You got to do that. Yeah, we're going to say it at the end. But we got to say it the whole time. Please, can you <laughs> like and subscribe? Like well, that's a nice note to end it on. <laughs> Give the if they made it that far. Give the video a big thumbs up, comment, like, and subscribe. Hit that bell because then you'll get the notifications of the next interview when these go up. Mm -hmm. And we'll have had a schedule for them by the time this is posted. We'll have organised that. You'd think so. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching. We'll leave all of Dan's details down mm -hmm. below. And um, enjoy. See you later. Bye.